NBC 10 breaking news. We interrupt the Kelly Clarkson show with breaking news we're following on NBC 10. Officials giving an update on yesterday's deadly stabbing at the Macy's in Center City. Let's listen. Charges against defendant Tyrone Garcelle Tunnell in reference to the double stabbing that occurred very recently in the homicide of a single security guard uh, in an important retail establishment in Philadelphia. This is a tragic but also remarkable story of some excellent police work that was done. Uh, it is a story that obviously is of interest to the city of Philadelphia. This is a city we love, that we care about. We are in a holiday season when people should feel that they can go out and they can shop and they can enjoy everything Center City Philadelphia has to offer without fear. And while we know that much of the crime data is positive, there is nothing positive about this experience. So we think it is very important to be as transparent as we can and share all the information that it is appropriate to share and that is available with reference to this incident. Uh, I think it is fair to remark that several of the people up here started this morning at 8 o'clock in a room with me. And we were talking about making sure that crimes against retail, crimes against uh, store owners, people who work in stores and commercial establishments do not happen in the city of Philadelphia. It's work that has been ongoing now, actually, for a couple of years and even more intensively over the next, over the last few months. Um, I feel like we have an excellent collaboration and have some pretty good ideas for how to make things better as we move forward. And yet, in the middle of all that, this terrible incident occurred. That work will go on, and I'm grateful to all the people standing with me uh, who are participating and have encouraged that kind of work. Let me introduce some of them, if I may. We have with us Robert Listenby, who is a first assistant DA here, ADA Joanne Pescatore, who is the chief of our homicide and non-fatal shooting unit in the DA's office and has spent quite a bit of time dealing with this case. Uh, ADA Pescatore has some specifics to offer. We have with us ADA Kimberly Essek, that's E-S-A-C-K, who's the chief of our economic crimes division. Shakina DeShazor, that's S-H-A-K-I-N-A, DeShazor, D-E-S-H-A-Z-O-R, is here, the chief of our DAO's CARES unit, which works intensively with the families of homicide victims in the first 45 days. Andrea Rivera, peer crisis responder from the CARES unit is here. Joseph Smiley, also with that unit. We have Police Commissioner John Stanford with us today of the Philadelphia Police Department, who has been heavily involved in these efforts to make sure that our retail establishments are safe, and we appreciate all of his cooperation and collaboration. We have Leslie, Rat, uh, Leslie Richards here, who is the general manager and CEO of SEPTA, who has also been, for many months, uh, working closely with us so that we can all try to bring a greater level of confidence in, in the public safety on SEPTA. And by the way, SEPTA did a fabulous job in terms of not only tracking this defendant as he fled the crime, but also assisting in his apprehension. We have Charles Lawson, who is the police chief uh, the SEPTA Transit Police, and thank you, Chief Lawson, for all the excellent work that was done on this case. Captain Sean Thornton of the Civil Enforcement Unit of the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office, Pennsylvania State Representative of the 182nd Legislative District, Ben Waxman is here. Uh, I know that Chairman Curtis Jones of the Public Safety Committee of the Philadelphia City Council is trying to get here. He's still in the middle of a very important hearing right now, may or may not make it. We have Michael Driscoll, Philadelphia Council Member for the 6th District here. We have Ketsi Losada, Philadelphia Council Member for the 7th District here. Uh, Jim Harrity, Philadelphia Council Member at Large is with us. Kendra Brooks is likewise at the hearing that has detained Council Member Jones, but we're hopeful that she can make it. And we have Philadelphia Council Member elect Nicholas O'Rourke, who is a who will be a member at large, will be sworn in very soon. Uh, but is already on the team in terms of trying to make sure that this city thrives and that people are safe when they go about their business this holiday. It is my honor to introduce as the first, second, and third speaker here, first, uh, Police Commissioner John Stanford, 
Second, SEPTA General Manager and CEO Leslie Richards. And third, SEPTA Police Chief Charles Lawson. After they have completed their comments, which I understand will be relatively brief, then I will come back up to introduce the next speakers. Thank you, Mr. DA. Uh, and as the, the district attorney alluded to, uh, this is a, an example of that collaborative work. Uh, one of the things that we are striving towards uh, to make the city safer and to be able to hold folks accountable for the criminal actions that they take part in. And so as you know, yesterday, just to give you some brief background on the events that, that bring us here today, uh, yesterday morning, just after 11 a.m., six district officers responded to the 1300 block of Market Street uh, to a Center City department store uh, for a report of a stabbing. Upon arriving, they located uh, two employees uh, who uh, performed the security duties uh, for the store, both suffering from stab wounds. Uh, both of those individuals were transported to Jefferson Hospital by police, uh, and unfortunately, uh, one of the individuals was pronounced at 1119 yesterday morning. Uh, the suspect involved in this incident uh, originally entered the store uh, before 11 a.m., uh, attempted to uh, take what we know uh, a few knit caps um, from the location uh, without being uh, without paying for that. The merchandise was confronted by the security staff, um, at which point the security staff uh, allowed the individual to leave after retrieving the merchandise. Um, this person, the, the defendant, then returned to the location uh, approximately 15 minutes later, which was just after 11. Uh, and confronted uh, both security uh, staff, uh, leading to uh, stabbing both security staff. Um, and as I said, one was pronounced at 11:19. Uh, um, the, the suspect then fled from the location uh, and entered the subway system. Um, and I will turn it over to Chief uh, Lawson to explain in terms of what, uh, how SEPTA participated in that. Um, that process, which ultimately led to the to the arrest, but just good collaborative work, good communication between Philadelphia police officers and SEPTA police officers, ultimately leading to an, a quick arrest, a quick apprehension of the individual uh, before you can bring harm to anyone else. And then again, the collaborative work between the district attorney's office and our department um, throughout this process uh, to, to ensure that this individual is charged accordingly. And so I'll step aside at this point and allow SEPTA to uh, continue. So thank you, uh, DA Krasner, Commissioner. Um, on SEPTA's behalf, I want to say that our thoughts are with the victims, their families and loved ones during this very difficult time. I want to thank Chief Lawson and our transit police for taking immediate action yesterday that led to the arrest of the suspect. We have over 30,000 security cameras on our system, and we often say if you commit a crime on SEPTA or are near SEPTA, it will be on video and you will be held accountable. This incident shows how this technology, as well as how the officers who utilize it, have an impact beyond just the SEPTA system. We work closely with all of our law enforcement partners and yesterday is an example of how effective those efforts can be. Within minutes of yesterday's tragic incident, SEPTA police were able to identify the suspect and track him in real time as he attempted to get away on the Market Frankfurt line. Our cameras captured him discarding the knife and boarding the train. And just minutes later, SEPTA police were able to take him into custody at the Somerset station. Chief Lawson has created a new virtual patrol unit to monitor cameras and help with responses to incidents. Along with adding more patrol officers to the department, this is helping with our efforts to identify potential trouble spots and put our officers in the best possible position to protect our customers and our employees. SEPTA is committed to being a part of the solution to the challenges our city faces. Again, I want to express our heartfelt condolences to the family of the security guard who was murdered. I'm grateful to our dedicated transit police to, for their efforts to get the suspect into custody. 
and I'd like to turn it over to our police chief, Chief Lawson, to fill you in with more information. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. <clears throat> so I want to echo uh, Commissioner Stanford's uh, uh, comments. What a, what a tremendous example of coordination, partnership between the Central Police Department, Philadelphia Police Department. Um, increasing public safety in this city is a shared responsibility. Uh, we're committed to working with our partners in the city uh, to bring, bring safer streets, safer schools, safer public transit to Philadelphia. Um, to that end, we're committed to bringing the full weight of our collective law enforcement resources to bear uh, to keep dangerous criminals off the street. Uh, to that end, we, we were able essentially to receive information from the Philadelphia Police Department very quickly. Uh, after this incident occurred and and were able to track with a group who, who, who in real time uh, track conditions of the system, track this offender essentially from the doorstep of Macy's uh, into uh, the 13th Street Station and onto an eastbound train. Uh, that time, uh, our technology uh, has advanced to the point where we can track in real time, uh, go look live into the train uh, we're able to identify the offender in this case sitting on an eastbound train while our individuals organized uh, an arrest and intercept of that individual down the line. Uh, and so we're pleased uh, in the aftermath of a, of a terrible tragedy to play a small role in bringing a dangerous criminal uh, to justice. Thank you. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce ADA Joanne Pescatore, who is the chief of our homicide non-fatal shooting unit, to talk about not so much the policing, which has been covered, but to talk about the prosecutorial aspects of this case. Thank you, DA Krasner. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Tyrone Garcel Tunnel, uh, the charges that were approved for him. The victim was Eric Harrison, that was the decedent in this case. He was the first security guard that was in fact stabbed. Uh, he was stabbed in the neck area. Uh, he died very shortly thereafter. The charges for him were murder generally. The second victim, Christian Mitchell, the second security guard that was stabbed that came to the aid of Eric Harrison, who tackled the defendant after he stabbed Mr. Harrison, uh, who brought him down. Uh, he was stabbed in the process. He's in, currently in uh, critical but stable condition. He actually had to have surgery as a result of his wounds. Charges for him were attempted murder, aggravated assault, simple assault, recklessly endangering another person, possession of an instrument of a crime, tampering with evidence, and retail theft as a felony of the third degree. As the DA and as uh, uh, the police commissioner said, uh, the defendant was in the process of stealing some hats. Uh, the Macy's store has an unbelievable uh, security system. Thank God they do. Uh, they were able to track this particular person through the store. The security guards intercepted him before he made the street. Uh, there was a tussle in the foyer for those hats. Uh, the male left, Mr. Tunnel left the store. Approximately 13 minutes later, he came back in the store and confronted those security guards for gripping him up and for treating him the way they did. The one security guard was in the men's department, the other security guard was faced on with him. It's at that point that the defendant pulls out a knife, it's a switchblade knife. There's a young uh, mother and her child walking by at the time. He approaches that security guard, he then sees the other security guard that I guess he really had the beef with. He goes after him and stabs him once in the neck. That security guard falls and the other security guard comes to his aid. It's then that you see the defendant get up, pick up a shoe from the victim that had fallen off, uh, ran down the steps of the septa station, sat down on a bench, threw that knife away, we recovered that knife, uh, and put on the shoe of the victim. I wanna thank the Philadelphia Police Department, the homicide detectives, Detective Lucky did a phenomenal compilation in this case, and of course, the SEPTA police, for without them and their ingenuity and their help and their cameras and their quick uh, way to get to this particular defendant on that train, um, he didn't get away. 
And so those are the charges. He's currently being held without bail. Uh, he will have a preliminary hearing sometime in the next two weeks. Thank you, ADA Pescatore. We've spoken now about policing and prosecution. There is no higher priority than support for victims and survivors, especially at this phase in a case. And therefore, I'd like to call forward the DAO's Victim Support Services team, First Assistant Robert Listenby, Shakina DeShazor, Andrea Rivera, and Joseph Smiley, who will discuss the DAO's response to family survivors and impacted parties in connection with this incident and also in general. Uh, thank you very much, District Attorney Krasner. Uh, one of the assignments that District, District Attorney Krasner has given me is to oversee the Victim Support Services Division. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Joseph Smiley, who will provide the report about victims. Mr. Smiley. Thank you, D.A. Krasner and Bob Listenby. My name is Joseph Smiley. I'm with Philadelphia Cares, and this is my coworker, Andrea Rivera. We're both peer crisis responders. I've been with Philadelphia Cares for about a year and a half, and I just want to inform you all what it is that Philadelphia Cares actually does. We work closely with families to provide support services such as victims compensation, grief counseling referrals, as well as relocation referrals, among many other types of referrals. Peer crisis responders were, were deployed to the incident yesterday and arrived around 1145 AM. Peer crisis responders met with management and employees. They provided trauma-informed support to employees who were traumatized by the incident. Peer crisis responders gave out brochures, provided information about the CARES program, and also provided each person with their contact information. Peer crisis responders remained available to support additional staff or customers that may have needed support. Andrea and myself were deployed to Jefferson Hospital and arrived shortly thereafter. Myself and Andrea provided support and services to the surviving family members, and a follow-up call was made this morning to the victim's mother to assist her with any immediate needs. And peer crisis responders provided her with requested information, and the PCR assigned to the family will follow up with more support later today to assist her with any next steps. All right, and it is now my pleasure to introduce a team of elected officials who are standing together, united, and in a collaborative spirit to make sure that it is understood that at all levels, law enforcement, government, and community are working together to make us safe this holiday season. Safe as civilians, safe in our, in our jobs, safe in our travel, safe in our shopping, to make us safe. Um, sadly, a couple of them are still tied up doing the good work that they do all the time, but I would like to call forward uh, to speak as they wish State Representative Ben Waxman, as well as Councilmember Kurt Jones, if he makes it, Councilmember Brooks, if she makes it, Councilmember Losada, who is here, Councilmember Harity, who is here, Councilmember Dris Drix Driscoll, I'm sorry. Council Member Driscoll. We're learning a lot about Thank a story you. that we have been you? covering, especially that it would not have happened, the apprehension of the suspect, if it were not for the 30,000 cameras on Council. the SEPTA system. We'll continue to follow this story in coming up at 4 o'clock. And we know Tyrone Tunnell, of course, charged with murder and other offenses for the stabbing death of Eric Harrison, security guard at the Macy's in Center City. It's when to lead our newscast at 4 o'clock. Now we return you to our regular programming.